What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So this is an unboxing of the Insta360 Link 2, the AI powered 4K webcam. Now this thing is pretty incredible. Again, 4K resolution, 30 FPS. You can make it go into 60 FPS if you need to. Uh, in OBS, it's pretty easy. It's got AI noise canceling, true focus, and in the box, there's a lot of stuff. You get the webcam, you get the magnetic mount, you get the USB-C to USB-C cable, which I'm currently using now, and the USB Type-C to A adapter, which I did try to use, but eh. The recognition markers, so that way the AI can track the markers, and a quick start guide and a warranty card. Now, as you can see, there's the magnetic mount there on the bottom, of course, and the camera up top. That green button on the camera is a touch sensor. So when you touch it three times, you can upgrade the firmware remotely as long as it's plugged into your PC, which is nice. And I didn't know at first, but that is magnetic. Uh, you'll see me struggle at the end of the video with that. And getting this open was annoyingly difficult, which means, hey, at least it's well packaged, right? And, uh, well, this webcam's been pretty darn good so far. Look at that thing. That thing is a chonker, by the way. That thing is heavy. That is a very well-built mount, which impressed the hell out of me. Now, I'm sorry about the footage. I had to record this in a really weird way because, well, for some reason, my, uh, Overlight was acting strange, so yeah, I had to do away with it the best that I could. Now, there is a screw mechanism there, and I don't know what that's for exactly, but I'm guessing there's add ons. And that did not come off according to plan. There's that half sensor right there. This thing is very well built, even the webcam microphone sounds really good. I've been using this thing in the last couple of live streams and all of my current recordings. And uh, look at that thing on the bottom. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Uh, like, this thing's really cool. And it does full 360. It does up and down, left and right, all of it. Full 360. Uh, the AI tracking is dead on. It comes with a huge suite of what do you call it, uh, settings and options and everything else, you name it. Like, it's, it's been super useful. Those are the tracker markers right there. There's the cable, and uh, you get stickers with it. Pretty nice. There's your warranty card. And that's it. That's everything that's in the box, including that USB-C to A adapter. Anyway, uh, in the next part of this video, we're going to be going through the settings. I had to install Windows to do this. Don't get mad at me. I immediately deleted it afterwards. So off we go on to the next part of things. Uh, today's video is pretty simple. We're just going over this, uh, well, Instacam, uh, sorry, Insta360 link controller software. So what that essentially means is we're on Windows at the moment. I want to go over the full feature set of this um, software. And because it's important to the webcam and other things like that, I figured I'd uh, get it done. So flashbang, mostly for me, but kind of for you as well. All right. So there, this is us looking our best and let's maximize this to, I said, maximize it, not like overkill it. Come on, dude. Really? Fine. Let me just try to make this actually maximized without, you know, fully maximizing it. There we go. So this uh, is the control suit for the webcam, the Insta360 Link. Uh, it's the one with the gimbal on it, so it does 360 and it does do a lot of AI tracking. So if we need to, you know, it can, it can look me out and do whatever it needs to do. It can follow me and keep me in frame the whole time which is nice and it also has whiteboard smart whiteboard desk view I'm not clicking desk view you don't want to see what's down there I don't want to see what's down there half the time no 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 now you are able to control anything you want including exposure everything else but only if you don't have HDR mode enabled we wanted to we could disable HDR mode and 
I really don't notice a difference, honestly. I don't whatsoever, but it is what it is. Uh, that allows you to deal with your exposure and everything else, and you can manually deal with that. You have options for everything, color presets, backgrounds. I have it currently blurred. Uh, you can turn that off. You can turn that on. You can turn that to bokeh if it's under 4K. I don't know why you're not supporting bokeh at 4K. That seems kind of weird. Uh, you can also swap out the background. It does not work very well. At all. So we're going to stick with blur. Blur kind of works a little bit better, but also you can see that there are a couple of issues still. But, um... Mm, yeah, if we didn't have our headphones on, it would literally put a ch pull a chunk out of our heads. And, of course, there's show more and stuff, but um, you can add your own like background if you need to say we want to be inside the TARDIS uh I can do that let me just go grab an image of that TARDIS inside uh I like Matt Smith's TARDIS better it's a very low resolution image so is that one uh why did it turn this back on there we go. Ha. Ah. Yeah, well, finding one is going to be a bit difficult. Um, for the reason, because it doesn't look like they, uh, they include an advanced search for it anymore. Yeah. Ugh, and I don't want to have to deal with anything related to the 10th Doctor, but... No, not the 10th. Uh, yes, the 10th. I hate the 10th Doctor. He's just a despicable man. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. I'm going to go to pictures, and it doesn't. So let's just enable Maria. Oh. So it only works if you have something that's 1080p, or less than, I guess. Let's try this one. Now we're inside the TARDIS. It doesn't look very good at all, but at least we're in here, right? So that's pretty cool that you're able to do that. Oh, no, that involves 10. I don't like 10. And uh, here's another image that I'm going to save and we're going to try out. Ah, uh, and it doesn't want to work because it's another WEBP file, which is something they're probably going to have to add. But as you can see, it instantly adjusted us to the background, which is nice. Let's go back to Blur. Yeah, we should be good to go. Now, there's all sorts of filters and stuff, but for the filters to work, we have to be in 1080p for some reason, which is kind of lame. Uh, makeup filters. Oh, no. Then there's this. And then there's Rose. It just makes me look like a villain. And again, I've always been the villain. <laughs> Coral. Yeah. So this thing applies makeup to your face. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. I feel like it's Halloween already. I get to play pretend with everybody else. Another thing here is there's vintage filters and daylight filters portrait filters vintage 2 and a neon and of course the clear filter I don't know what the clear one does but it is what it is we're going to click back to portrait because it just looks better uh, now there is another mode in here somewhere and you have to go to view I think to get it it's called um no. Wait. Where is it effects? I believe it's in here. It's called portrait resolution and high frame rate. It's meant for when you're streaming and stuff. I don't know why, but the audio mode's there too. And you can bunch of gestures and stuff. So if I do this, it turns on AI tracking. And then again, it follows me around. Center me up. This again to turn it off. And again, 
two fingers for whiteboard mode and it will start scanning. I don't know how to turn it off though. No, no, no. It doesn't make any sense in how I turn it off. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to turn that off manually. Uh, there's also a zoom. I can't get the zoom to work. It recognizes it. I, I don't know. Just, just things like that are strange. You can also triple tap the, um, I believe it's triple tap and hold to update the firmware without needing this thing at all which is kind of nice, but uh, the background of place is kind of cool, but what about background removal? They don't do that, so, you know, there's that. Again, you can do a flip, I guess. So now I can actually touch the side of my face without needing to worry about it. We're gonna leave it like this for the rest of the video though, because this is what, well, this is me. This is the right side of my, this is like the left side of my face. This is the right side of my face. This is just me being natural. Like if I was in a mirror, ah, uh, there's just, there's just so many controls when it comes to this thing. It's kind of insane. Honestly, um, this is one of the most packed webcams that you can probably find. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of loving it now to enable this. You'd have to go to properties and select the virtual camera instead of the normal camera because the normal camera will just it'll turn everything off, right? So virtual camera it is. That's what we're using. And I look very natural in the preview on OBS, but like when I'm staring at my main screen, I'm very oversaturated and it's kind of annoying. And now I'm kind of both which is interesting like by default this is what it normally looks like and i don't like the fact that it's so dark i guess but it is what it is so i added some extra saturation and stuff the sharpness is out of this world watch this look how sharp that is it's like every detail on my face i'm gonna just leave it like at 44 yeah, let's turn HDR back on. And our really neutral and all the definition is being picked up in the lighting. It's really cool. Now, there's a lot more to this than just that. But unfortunately, I can't go over the rest of it. I don't know. It just doesn't want to work. Smart composition seems to be pretty cool. Uh, as for anything else in settings, not much there. There's general and hotkeys about us and stuff uh optimized audio quality and routine bug fixes so i don't actually need to update that at all unless this is like no this is for the program itself i don't know connect to your mobile phone to remotely control the device huh does this thing give out some sort of signal to allow us to do that? Is that, is that how that works? Um, scan code. There we go. Well, that didn't work at all. It didn't. Let's try that again. There we go. Instant what? Oh, wow. So yeah, it does work. Actually works pretty well. Almost near instant. It's kind of cool. So yeah, mobile. Right there. HDR has it all blown out though. I guess with that, um, I need to wipe out Windows now and go back to where we were. Uh, but I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This I'll put the link to the camera in the description below. Even though I'm under no obligation to do so. But I mean it's a pretty cool camera. This this software doesn't work on Linux at all. Which is why I'm using, why I'm using it on Windows. Is because I actually wanted to show it off. And I did that. So my job's done now.
as for this camera, um, I guess I could kind of say this. This camera is honestly a 10 out of 10, even without all these extra features. It's definitely made things a lot easier for me, which I very much enjoy. It looks fantastic. It looks 4K. It looks nice. It has HDR. And it literally deals with my face, you know, this whole super ultra light brown thing going on here. And uh, I rather enjoy it and it works well with Linux. I just hope that Insta360 actually brings the software to Linux because that would be fantastic. They say, uh, we'll add that to our suggestion box. They keep saying it like it's been wanted. It's been a thing that's been wanted for like years now and they're just keep ignoring it. I don't think they want to deal with Linux, but the camera works regardless. So there's that. Bye, everybody.